ultrasound guided supraclavicular nerve block. Anatomy. The supraclavicular nerve arises from the superficial cervical plexus. It is the most caudal branch of the superficial cervical plexus. The superficial cervical plexus arises from the ventral rami of C1 to C4, of which the supraclavicular nerves arise from the ventral divisions of C3 and C4. The supraclavicular nerves originate behind the posterior border of the sternomastoid and they penetrate through the investing layer of deep cervical fascia and they lie beneath the platysma and the superficial cervical fascia. After exiting behind the posterior border of the sternomastoid, the supraclavicular nerves divide into three branches. The anterior or the medial, the intermediate and then the lateral branches. This picture shows the sensory distribution of the supraclavicular nerves supplying the medial and lateral aspect of the cape of the shoulder. In addition, they also supply the clavicle and also the upper areas of the breast. The acromioclavicular joint is particularly specific uh, because it's supplied by the superficial cervical plexus and also the lateral pectoral nerves as well as divisions from the axillary nerve. The first description of ultrasound guided supraclavicular nerve block was done by Mabin et al. in 2011, where they used a high frequency linear probe to show the supraclavicular nerves right behind the posterior border of the sternomastoid. The scanning method used by the authors was to use a high frequency linear probe and to identify the C5, C6, and C7 roots as you would do for an interscalene brachial plexus and to scan cephalad to identify the C4 root as it enters into the transverse process. The supraclavicular nerves can be seen at the level of C4, just behind the posterior border of sternomastoid. The nerves penetrate the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia and, and rest beneath the platysma and the superficial cervical fascia. Immediately after emerging from the posterior border of the sternomastoid, the nerves divide into the medial, intermediate, and lateral branches over the middle scalene muscle. In this transverse scan, at the level of C4, you could identify the posterior, the sternomastoid, and then the posterior border, the C4 root, and then the transverse process, and the middle scalene muscle. The supraclavicular, and this is the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia. The supraclavicular nerves are seen just above this deep cervical fascia. You could see the nerve root of C4 entering the transverse process. And in this picture, you could see the sternomastoid here and then the supraclavicular nerves behind the sternomastoid resting on top of the middle scalene muscle. The indications to do a supraclavicular nerve block are predominantly for shoulder surgery, especially when a low volume block is done, typical volumes being less than 10 mils. Or it could be combined as a part of a cape block where the suprascapular and the axillary nerves are in addition blocked. This is a, that is a replacement technique for the interscaling block. The supraclavicular nerve block need not be done when large volume interscaling blocks are done, especially 20 mils volumes, because the spillover into the interscaling groove automatically blocks the superficial cervical plexus. The block is in addition indicated for surgery on the side of the neck, clavicle surgery, or for analgesia for clavicular fracture, or for acromioclavicular joint surgery. It can also be used for uh, breast surgery, especially when the, uh, the surgery involves the uh, upper quadrants. It is also used, it could be used as a replacement for a superficial cervical plexus block, mainly for performing central lines. The technique to do a supraclavicular nerve block is as for an interscalene brachial plexus block. 
First, the scanning with a high frequency linear probe, 6 to 13 megahertz, uh, with a depth setting of 1 to 3 centimeters in resolution mode. The scanning of the side of the neck at the level of C6 to identify the C5, C6, and C7 nerve roots, and then the scanning is continued cephalad. At the level of the C4, uh, a 25 to 50 millimeter insulated needle is inserted from the posterior to anterior direction and a typical volume of 3 to 5 mils of 0.25 percent pupivacaine is used to block the supraclavicular nerve. If a nerve stimulator is used, paresthesia can be elicited with the lateral or medial cape of the shoulder depending on the branch of the supraclavicular nerve that is in contact. This video demonstrates the performance of a supraclavicular nerve block. The scanning is done at the level of the C4, where you could see the nerve roots of C4 entering the transverse process, the posterior border of the sternum mastoid, and the supraclavicular nerves just behind the posterior border of sternum mastoid, resting on top of the scalenous medius muscle. The needle comes in plane from a posterior to anterior direction to penetrate the superficial cervical fascia and then a typical injection of 3 to 5 mils of local anesthetic is done.